Jack Benny program, presented by Lucky Strike. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. Your level best. That's how you'll feel when you light up a Lucky. Because Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. Put you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's important to you as a smoker to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And every smoker knows. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, mild, ripe, light tobacco. Remember, more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So next time you buy cigarettes, remember that Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. By putting you on the right level, the lucky level, to feel and do your level best. That's the lucky level. Smoke a lucky to feel your level best. Smoke a lucky to feel your level best. Get on the lucky level where it's fun to be alive. Get a carton of luckies and get started today. And listen, here's a Christmas gift suggestion that's bound to make a big hit. Say Merry Christmas 200 times by giving the gay holiday-wrapped carton of 200 luckies. And for that extra special someone on your list, give Lucky Strike 500s. The handsome Christmas gift box of 25 packages of Lucky Strike cigarettes. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the sportsman, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, there are only five more days till Christmas. So let's go down to the local department store where Jack and Mary have gone to do their last minute Christmas shopping. Mary, Mary, read my Christmas list, will you please? Uh, gold cufflinks, platinum cigarette lighter, silk pajamas, a star sapphire ring, a Cadillac, a diamond stick. Pen. No, no, Mary. Those are the things I'm asking Santa Claus to give me. <laughs> my shopping list is on the other side. Oh. Oh, here it is. A package of lifesavers, <laughs> razor blades, toothbrush, shoelaces. Jack Benny, you ought to be a Mary, chef. I gave you the wrong one. Here's my Christmas list. See? Don Wilson, wallet. Well, let's go. The leather goods counter's over there. Okay. Gee, the yes, store is crowded. Can, uh, can I help you, please? Oh, yes. I'd like to see some of your wallets. Well, we have a large variety. All these wallets you see here are $1.98. A dollar ninety-eight. Yes, sir. Uh, Jack, here's some better wallets over here. Oh yes, I think Don would like this one. It's a uh, genuine cowhide. Cowhide? Uh, how much is that? Forty dollars. <laughs> cowhide. Forty dollars. Jack, stop squeezing it. It won't give milk. <laughs> But, Mary... Look, Jack, Don has been with you 15 years. It's about time you got him something nice. But, Mary, $40. Oh, Jack, for heaven's sake, for once in your life, show Don you appreciate his loyalty. You know, Mary, you're right. I'm going to get Don this wallet. He deserves it. Mister, I'll take that $40 wallet. Yes, sir. Does that, uh, does that include the engraving? Oh, yes. Uh, what would you like to put on it? The price. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I want to enclose one of these cards. Let's see. What will I write? To Don. A very merry Christmas from Jack Benny. Here it is, mister. Make a nice gift package and see that Mr. Wilson gets it before Christmas. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. I want to go to the sporting goods department and get something for Phil. Now, here we are. Gee, they sure have a nice assortment of guns and hunting equipment, Jack. Yeah, I think I should be able to get something for Phil here. They seem to have almost... And may I help you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yes, clerk. I'd like to get something for a friend who is quite a sportsman. Well, we've got all kinds of camping equipment. Uh, does he sleep outdoors much? <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes right in front of the house. <laughs> Jack, 
Uh, Clark, he has all the camping equipment he needs. His favorite sport, though, is hunting. See, he makes two or three trips a year to the High Sierras. Oh, does he hunt bear? Well, a few days ago, he... Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, mister. Mister, ask me that again, will you? Does he hunt bear? No, Petrillo makes him wear his union suit. <laughs> What's, uh, what's the matter, clerk? Didn't you get it? Yes, and if you'll lend me your handkerchief, I'll wipe it off. <laughs> Look, I, I didn't come here for any of your silly wisecracks. He thinks he's smart, doesn't he, Mary? Uh, don't talk to me. I'm pretending I'm not with you. <laughs> what? And now, sir, supposing you look over some of these items while I take care of another customer. Okay, okay. Do you mind if I fool around with this gun? Not at all. It's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mary. Mary, I wonder if Phil... Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Mr. Kitzel. Are you doing your Christmas shopping? Yes, I'm buying a Christmas present for my wife. She's always complaining she hasn't got what to wear. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll get her something sporty in the line of clothes, you know? Oh. Well, that sounds nice. Why don't you get your wife a pair of slacks? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you never saw my wife. <laughs> She's not the type to wear slacks. Why? Well, she should be slack. She's lumpy. <laughs> Oh, your, your wife is a little chubby, eh? A little chubby. From the back, she looks like Don Wilson from the front. <laughs> and sideways, you wouldn't believe it. I'll take your word for it. Huh? Tell me, Mr. Benny, what are you getting your neighbor for Christmas? My neighbor? Yes, uh, Ronald Goldman. <laughs> oh, no, that's Ronald Coleman. I don't know what to get him, but I'll think of something. Yes, I suppose. Well, I better finish my shopping. Lumpy is expecting me home for dinner. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Gitzel, and Merry Christmas. The feeling is reciprocal. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Uh, make up your mind. We still have other shopping to do, you know. All right. You know, I think I'll take this fishing outfit. Oh, clerk. Uh, just a minute. I have other customers. Oh, all right. I'll wait. Uh, that'll be eight seventy-six, madam. Hmm. Uh, have you decided on that, sir? Good. That'll be twelve seventy-five. Gee. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sixteen fifty out of twenty. Gosh. Ouch. Finally got your nose caught in it, didn't you? <laughs> Never mind. Just give me that fishing rod. Now, wrap it up, and I'll call for it later. Come on, Mary. Gee, my nose hurts. Well, it's your own fault. Now, let's finish our shopping. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Mary. What's the matter? I've been thinking about that card I put in Don's gift. You know, I think I should have written something clever. I'm going back to the wallet department. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dad. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Yes, sir? Remember me? I, I bought a $40 wallet here a few minutes ago, and I'd like to change the card. But, mister, I, I've already got it wrapped with ribbon and tinsel and everything. Well, I'm sorry, but you'll have to open it up. I want to change the card. But, uh, mister... Now, please, I'm a customer here. Open it up. Okay. I know what I'll do. I'll write a poem. Oh, fine. Henry Wadsworth, tight fellow. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh... Oh, oh, I've got one. To Don. This gift is from Jackie and golly, oh shucks. I hope that you like it. It costs 40 bucks. <laughs> there you are, there you are, mister. Wrap this up with a gift. I'm wrapping it, I'm wrapping it. <laughs> Come on, Mary. You know, Mary, I'm glad I'm giving down that $40 wallet. Yeah, it'd be kind of tough to get a rhyme for $1.98. Yeah. Now, Mary, let's go up to the mezzanine and... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy, you little fugitive from the doll counter. <laughs> hello, Phil. My, you're certainly loaded down with packages. Yeah, I've been shopping all day. Got presents for everybody. How about you two? 
Well, I'm nearly finished with my shopping. Your five bucks is almost gone, huh? <laughs> Bill, for your information, I just spent $40 on Don Wilson. What'd you do, take him to lunch? <laughs> no, I... Uh, look out, Phil. One of your packages is slipping. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> Oh, darn it. Now I'll have to get Remley another present. <laughs> Let's move away. I'm getting dizzy. Uh, Phil, did you get gifts for the rest of your band? Yeah, I bought every guy more extra a pair of bedroom slippers. Bedroom slippers? For your musicians? Uh-huh. I thought if I could get them started with those, maybe we could get shoes on them later. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> anyway, I got all my boys taken care of. The only one I ain't got a gift for yet is Alice. Uh, maybe she'd like to boo. Could be. She thought he was great in Elephant Boy. <laughs> Bill, that's taboo. He's a picture star. I wouldn't know. I'm a radio man myself. <laughs> well, I'll be running along. I've got to get Remley another bottle of toilet water. <laughs> toilet water? Phil, that bottle that broke was toilet water? Certainly. If it was the other, do you think I'd have stood here and let it soak into the rug? <laughs> See you later, Jackson. Bye, Mary. Bye, Phil. Goodbye, Phil. Come on, Mary. You know, I'm going to be on Phil's show, but he doesn't know it, you know. Hey, let's go up to the mezzanine. They always have nice things up there. Okay, here's the elevator. Yeah. The mezzanine, please. Gee, that's funny, Mary. Four guys running one elevator. Second floor. Christmas toys for girls and boys. Sweater, shirts, and ties. Corset stays, men's toupees, toothpicks any size. You will like Lucky Strike. Buy them here because they're round and firm and fully packed, just like Santa Claus. Fellas, you passed my floor. Look, and I wanted to get off at the mezzanine. Third floor. Here you'll find Venetian blinds, pool and billiard cues. Movie reels, rubber heels, boots and button shoes. Coaster bikes, Lucky Strikes. Try one and you'll see. Your best bet in cigarettes is LSMFT. Fellas, look, take me down, will you? I wanted the mezzanine. Fourth what? floor. Oh, for heaven. Pots and pans, garbage cans, silverware and knives. Buggy whips and pillow slips, china wear and chive. Cartons of smokes you love make a perfect gift. Lucky's are the best by far, so give your friends a lift. Look at fellas, please. I wanted the mezzanine. Take me to the mezzanine. Fifth floor. Tootsie rolls, donut holes, button hooks and bows. Violins that fit your chin, shovels, rakes and walls. Railroad spikes, lucky strikes, get them on this floor. Once you smoke the lucky strike, we're sure that you want more. Look, boys, I want to finish shopping. Now take me down to the mezzanine. Going down. Mezzanine, gasoline, alligator bags. Coats and coats and billy goats and girdles if it sags. Let us off, let us off, we've got things to do. Merry Christmas to you all, and a happy new year too. Thanks. Jack, we're back on the main floor. Well, how do you like that? I asked him to say it's just as well. You know, I've been thinking about that card for Don's wallet. Jack! I don't think it's an appropriate card for a $40 gift. I'm going back and change it. Well, I haven't got nerve enough to face that clerk. I'm going to buy something for my sister, Babe. Babe? What are you going to get her? Well, she asked me to send her a telescope. What does Babe want with a telescope? Uh, she lives across the street for the YMCA. <laughs> Well, I'll meet you here later. I'm going to change that card. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Yes, sir? What can I... <laughs> oh, it's you again. Yes, yes. I, I want to change the card in that gift. Oh, no. No, no. First you buy the gift. Then you write the card. Then I wrap the gift. Then you change the card. But look, then I unwrap the gift. Mr. And then you rewrite the card. And then I wrap the gift. And now you want to write another card. Look, uh, never mind that. Just unwrap the gift, will you? I've already sent it down to the delivery department. <laughs> well, look, uh, you'll, you'll just have to go down there and get it. All right, I'll go. I'll go. I haven't run into anyone like you in 20 years. Oh, why did the governor have to give me that pardon? <laughs> 
look, look. Just bring me my package, will you? All right, all right. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> hmm. What an eccentric character, you know? Something like it. Stevie, uh, Stevie, maybe we can buy something for Mr. Benny here. Okay, Joey, let's look around. Something I can do for you boys? Uh, yes, we'd like to buy something for the treasurer of our club, the Beverly Hills Beavers. A present for the treasurer of your club, eh? How old is he? About the same age as you. Thirty-nine. <laughs> well, boys, it's none of my business, but how come you picked a 39-year-old man to be the treasurer of your beaver club? Because he's such a good businessman. He puts all of our dues in the treasury, and then he lends it out at 10%. <laughs> oh, I see. Who does he lend it to? Us. <laughs> that it's Christmas, we were thinking of getting him a necktie. Well, that's always a nice present. Why don't you buy him one that matches his favorite suit? No, we like this one. It matches his eyes. Oh, are his eyes blue? Bluer than the waters of Lake Louise under a sultry summer sky. <laughs> My, where did you boys learn that? Every beaver has to memorize it before I can borrow money. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he'll like this tie. It's a dollar fifty cents. I'll wrap it up for you. Thank you. Here you are, Mister. Now let's not have any more trouble. Make the card out right this time, will you? Yes, Jack. We've wasted enough time. All right. Uh, how do you think this sounds, Mary? To Don, your pear-shaped tones, many announcers ape, but no one can match your pear-shaped shape. <laughs> Isn't that a cute, huh? Yes, Jack, it's a beautiful poem. Nick Kenny would be proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Uh, Dennis, I didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, I brought my mother's lunch. She's the Santa Claus. <laughs> Your mother is the Santa Claus with a white beard and everything? Yeah, and she sure fooled my father. He climbed up in her lap and told her he wanted Hedy Lamar for Christmas. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, what did she do? I don't know, but now my father goes around singing All I Want for Christmas is my two front teeth. <laughs> oh, say, say, Dennis. Dennis, listen. Come here, come here a minute, will you? Huh? Dennis, you, you've been a nice kid. You've been with me so long. Here it is Christmas, and... Well, here's a $50 bonus. Oh, uh, that's just a trick to get me to buy something for you. It is not. I don't care if you don't get me anything. Oh, yeah? Last year when I forgot to buy you a present, you picked me up and threw me in your Bendix. What? And then you charged me 40 cents for washing my shirt. Look, kid, if you don't want... Oh, my goodness. What's the matter, Jack? Just a minute. Oh, clerk. Now what? Now what? <laughs> That, that card I wrote to Mr. Wilson, I left it right here on the counter, and I, I can't find it. Oh, don't worry about it. I found it, and I put it in the package, wrapped it up, and sent it down to the delivery room. Well, I, uh, I forgot to sign the card. You're creating a scene. It's okay, lady. I'll get his package. The customer is always right. And this jerk is a customer. <laughs> see, Mary, you, you've got to know how to handle these people, you see? Now, come on. Let's shop around till he gets the package from the delivery room. Will you? <laughs> Say, Mary, what do you think I ought to get for my sister Florence? Well, I don't know. Uh, laundry might be nice. Say, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Uh, there's the lingerie counter right over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, pardon me, but would you mind waiting on us? Uh, why not? <laughs> Your money's as good as anybody. 
Well, could you show me something in silk lingerie? Certainly. What's your size? <laughs> Look, they're not for me. Uh, they're for his sister, size 34. Okay. Here's a whole box of them. Uh, will you lay the lingerie out for us, please? Well, just a minute till I put my gloves on. Gloves? Touching that stuff with my bare hands makes me a nervous wreck. <laughs> What? Especially the black ones. <laughs> Look. Look, mister, we haven't got all day. Show us something in size 34. Okay. Here's a nice little garment. A genuine, pure silk nighty. Gee, that's awfully pretty. I think this would be very... Uh, uh, wait a minute, mister. What are these little loops on the bottom of the nightgown? The loops? Yeah, the loops. <laughs> yes, uh, what are the loops for? When you go to bed, you hook them over your toes so the nightgown won't creep up on you. <laughs> well, that's swell, really. Wrap it up and send it to my sister, Mrs. Florence Fenchel. Here's the address. Yes, sir. Oh, look, Jack, there's Rochester doing his Christmas shopping, too. Yeah, shh. I want to hear what he's getting. Can I do anything for you? Yes, I'm looking for a Christmas present for my boss. Perhaps if you told me something about your employer, I'd be able to make some suggestions. How old is he? That and what happened to the gas man are the two burning issues of Beverly Hills. <laughs> well, you can't go wrong if you get him a nice scarf. We have some beautiful silk ones for $20. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Shh. Jack, he'll hear you. No, I'm afraid $20 is more than I had in mind. We also have some lovely ones for $15. That's still too much. Twelve fifty? dollars Uh-uh. Well, we have other gifts for about $10. $7.50? dollars Six dollars Five dollars? When you get down to a buck and a quarter, wrap it up. <laughs> well, that's not much of a gift. What does your boss usually give you for Christmas? A brand new dollar bill and a lecture on the evils of wine, women, and song. <laughs> oh. Well, look, if he's that kind of a man, why do you keep working for him? Well, it's kind of hard to explain. But he's good, thoughtful, kind, considerate, and he gives me his old toupees to cover my bicycle seat. <laughs> Oh. Well, here's a nice red scarf, which is really an excellent buy. I'd rather take this one here. The color will match his eyes. Are his eyes blue? Bluer than the waters of Lake Louise under a sultry summer sky. <laughs> oh, are you a beaver? No, but I work like one. <laughs> I don't know, Mary. Some little joke, I guess. Now, come on. Let's go and see. Oh, Mary. Mary, I just thought of something. Not again. Come on with me. It'll only take a minute. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Here's the package. I got it up from the delivery room. Now, go on and sign the card. No, no, no. That's not important now. I want to change the wallet. What? <laughs> Instead of the $40 one, I'll take the one that costs $1.98. Gee, he was such a young fellow, too. <laughs> well, I'll take the dollar ninety-eight wallet and put the money in his hand. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. I wonder if we have to. Oh, look who's here! Hey, Don! Don! Well, hi, Jack. Hello, Mary. Gee, what trouble I'm having in this store. Wish I didn't have such a big stomach. Why? Well, it seems there's a piano missing, and they searched me three times. <laughs> Oh, oh. Don, have you bought your wife's present yet? Oh, yes, I did that yesterday. But today I bought a gift for our gardener. Your gardener? Well, what'd you buy him? A $40 wallet. <laughs> a $40 wallet? For your gardener? 
Jack, the only other ones they had were $1.98, and I wouldn't give that to a dog. <laughs> well, you can start barking, brother, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Merry Christmas, Doc. See you later. Come on, Mary, let's go home. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom every Christmas, this time Dennis Day will sing Ava Maria. gentlemen, on behalf of my sponsors and my entire staff, I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Good night. This is NBC. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Friends, every time you light up a Lucky, you get more real deep down smoking enjoyment. Yes, that's exactly what you get from every Lucky you light. For to make certain that Luckies are a smoother, lighter, more deeply enjoyable smoke, Luckies pay more for fine tobacco, millions of dollars more than official parity prices. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And L.S. MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. 
Fine tobacco that guarantees a milder, truly finer cigarette for you. Yes, from first puff to last, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Beverly Hills. It's morning, and hundreds of people, brimming with the Christmas spirit, are waiting for the local department store to open its door. Oh, Mary. Mary, where are you? Here I am, Jack, right behind you. Oh, yeah. Say, Mary, how'd you like the way I wiggled myself through this crowd, right up to the front of the line? Yeah. Those rumble lessons you took from Arthur Murray really helped. I'll say. When we started, we were way at the end, and now there's only one man ahead of me. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Oh, look, look, Mary, they're getting ready to open the store and let the crowd in. I can see the manager walking over to the floor walker. Jasper. What is it, Mr. Simpkins? It's almost time to open the store. Are all the clerks at their station? Yes, sir. Good. You will open the doors in ten seconds. Are you ready for final inspection? Yes, sir. Hair? Comb. Chin? Out. Jacket? Pressed. Carnation? Moist. Good. <laughs> it is now nine o'clock. You may open the doors and guide our customers into the store. Yes, sir. Mule train! No! No! Mule train! Get it out! Get it out! Get it out! Mule train? Jasper. Jasper, how could you do a thing like that to our customers? When I saw those faces, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> Wait here, Mary. I'll be right back. Jack, don't get into it. Never mind. Say, mister, are you the manager? Uh, yes, I am. Well, as one of your steady customers, I resent being ushered into the store like a mule. I apologize, sir. I've never been... I so said, I apologize. Put your ears down. <laughs> Now, look, mister. Jack, I told you not to get into it. Come on. No, oh, all right. Jack, I'd like to go to a store with you just once where you don't get into an argument with everybody. Look, Mary, I'll admit that sometimes it may be my fault, but not this time. Imagine driving customers into a store yelling mule train. Well, don't stand there complaining. Go have your coat fixed. My coat? His whip tore your sleeve off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll just pin it and then fix it when I get home. Come on. Mary, what do you think I ought to get for my sister Florence in Chicago? Oh, I don't know. It ought to be something nice. You know, Mary, I have no brothers and no other sisters. Florence is my only close relative. I ought to get her something really nice. Uh, what'd you get her last year? A pencil sharpener. <laughs> oh, how sweet, Jack. But then she is your only sister. Yeah. <laughs> After all, you know... Jack, let's go outside and come in the store again. Why? I want that guy with a whip to get another crack at you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing doing. He had his chance. Anyway, I can't understand a store like this bringing customers in just the way... Hey, they... pardon me, mister. Did you see my wife? Huh? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Did you see my wife? No, I haven't. As a matter of fact, I don't even know your wife. Then how do you know you didn't see her? <laughs> Now, mister, how would I know... I can't stand here jabbering. i better go look for her. Chloe! <laughs> now, come on, Mary. Let's Oh, go. Jack, look. There's Dennis. Where? Oh, yes. Hey, young man, what can I do for you? Gee, I don't know what to get for my mother. She goes horseback riding a lot. Maybe she'd like it if I buy something for the horse. But say, mister... Yes? How much is that horse collar? Horse collar? Yes, that white one hanging up there on the wall. Young man, this is the plumbing department. <laughs> Just what is it you're looking for? I don't know, but I'd like to get something for my mother. Well, I can call the ladies' department and save you some time. 
Did you have anything in mind? Well, yes, sir. I think a dress would be nice. Oh, that's an excellent idea. What size dress does your mother wear? 36. 36? Uh-huh. I think I ought to get her a nightgown, too. Size 58. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, son. If your mother wears a 36 dress, why would she wear a 58 nightgown? She doesn't sleep in her girdle. <laughs> young man, young man, I think you're a little confused. However, I will admit there is a little variation in size, but very slight. Gee, I hope that movie company doesn't find out. Movie company? Yeah, they want my mother to take off her girdle to advertise their new picture. What picture? Lost Boundaries. <laughs> Young man, would you do me a favor and shoplift something so I can have you arrested? What? Yeah, let it go. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh-huh. Those men's shirts in that case across the aisle, are they real silk? Oh, yes, they are. They'd make a wonderful gift for your father. Oh, they're not for my father. I'd like to buy them for Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Do you know him? Oh, sure. He's on one of my shows. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Doing your Christmas shopping? Yeah. Gee, I was just going to decide on Mr. Benny's gift, and he had to walk up and spoil the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. I, I didn't know you wanted it to be a secret. Yeah. Now you'll have to close your eyes. Okay. Got them closed? Uh-huh. Okay, mister, you can wrap it up now and put it in a shoebox so he won't know it's a shirt. <laughs> can I open my eyes now? Yeah. Gee, that was a close one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, say, Mr. Benny, while my packages are being gift-wrapped, would you like to step over to the music counter and hear a record I just made? Oh, sure, kid. Come on. Oh, miss? Yes? Do you have the latest record made by Dennis Day? You mean I must have done something wonderful? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, would you play it, miss? I'm sorry, but our record player is broken. Broken? Yeah, all day yesterday, every five minutes, some curly-headed jerk kept requesting, that's what I like about the South. <laughs> I think I know who you mean. Uh, why didn't you tell him that you refused to play it? And get hit with a ham hock? <laughs> oh, yes, he's never without one. Gee, and I wanted you to hear my record. Well, if it'll make you feel better, Dennis, you sing and I'll spin you around. Eh? Okay. Okay, come on. Something wonderful to find someone like you. Somehow, somewhere, I did something sweet like helping. Wonderful 
very good, Dennis. I'll bet it's a swell record. Say, Mary, don't you think that song will be a... Mary? Now, where did Mary go? Well, she's way over there at the end of the counter. Oh, yeah. May I uh, wait on you, miss? Yes, uh, I'd like to get something for a gentleman. A gentleman? Your uh, husband? Uh, no, my boss. He's been nice to me, and I'd like to show my appreciation. Oh, here's something nice. A gold tie clasp. A gold tie clasp? No. Well, how about a gold keychain? No. How about gold cufflinks? Look, mister, I don't want to get him anything. He can melt down. <laughs> I wish I could think of something. Well, Miss, perhaps I could help you better if you told me how closely you two are associated. Are, uh, are you engaged? Uh, no, we're not. Is he your boyfriend? No, as a matter of fact, he treats me more like a sister. How about a pencil sharpener? <laughs> a pencil sharpener? Yes, we ship one to Chicago every year. <laughs> it goes to a girl named Flossie. Uh, you mean Florence. Well, I feel like I know her. <laughs> hey, hey, Mary. Mary, let's not keep losing each other. See, I spend more... Oh, hello, th- Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, hello. It's uh, on the way to Chicago. So, <laughs> wait a minute. This year, I was going to get my sister something different. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. You know, it's amazing how everybody knows I'm a comedian. (laughs) Mary, I'm going to get something else for my sister. Now, is there anything else, sir? Well, I don't know, baby. Uh, Let's see what I've bought so far. Well, there's one black negligee. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's for my ever-loving wife. Oh, you're... you're married? Am I married? Why, I'm married to Alice Faye, the sweetest (laughs) little gal who ever... Oh, come on now, baby, stop crying. There ain't enough of me for everybody. (laughs) Yes, sir. Happens every time. (laughs) Now, let's see, honey, I've got everybody's present except one for Jackson. Oh, I know, I'll, I'll get him a pair of socks. What size? Uh, Eleven and a half. These? Yeah. Now I'll just take off my shoes, put the new ones on, and then I'll be Mr. all right. Mr. Harris, I thought you were going to give socks to Mr. Benny. I am. Here are my old ones. Gift wrap them. <laughs> Don't you want me to sew up the holes first? No, no, no. Just throw in a needle and thread. And give the old man something to do when he gets home from his rumble lesson. <laughs> Yeah, put plenty of ribbon on the box so the kid can play oh, around. Hey, Phil. Well, dear hearts and gentle people. <laughs> Funny running into you, Phil. Yeah, how's Alice? Now stop it. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Usual thing. She's upset because she found out I'm married. Oh, now that's ridiculous. You <laughs> cried a little too, Dad. <laughs> But that was during the ceremony. It had nothing to do with you. Well, then why'd you cry? Because you wouldn't let him go on the honeymoon. <laughs> Mary, stop. I've seen that. Well, Jackson, I've got to finish my shopping, kids. Look, I've got to get some uh, California pennants. California pennants? Yeah, you see, I'm going to the Rose Bowl game, and I want to cheer for California. But all they got in this store are pennants from Syracuse. Pennants from Syracuse? Sure. There's a big box of them right up there on the counter. See what it says? Syracuse pennants. That circus peanut. <laughs> Syracuse pennant. Phil, how can you be... He disappeared in the crowd. Good, good. Now, Mary, I wish you'd help me decide on something for my sister, Flora. Well, Jack, I've been trying to think. Gosh, I don't know. Hey, mister, are you sure you didn't see my wife? Uh, Look, buddy, I'd like to help you, but I don't know what your wife looks like. Has she got any identifying marks? Well, she's got a birthmark on... Never mind, I'll look for her myself. (laughs) Yes, yes, you better. Hello! Come on, Mary. Why does everybody have to pick on me? Well, have you made up your mind, sir? Huh? Oh! Oh, I was just looking around. I sure would like to give my girl a ring like that. Well, I don't blame you. That's a beautiful diamond ring. Uh, How much is it? $4,000. 
That doesn't sound so bad. Uh, where do I look in my bank book? Hmm. Well? Uh, where do I turn the page? Hmm. Well? Uh, where do I turn another page? Hmm. Well? Uh, just a minute, I'm on the last page. Well, what's on the last page? Put something in the pot, boy. <laughs> Look, mister, if you want to buy this ring, you don't have to pay the $4,000 cash. You can pay for it on easy terms. All you have to do is establish credit rating. Uh, credit rating? Yes, I have the forms right here. Your name? Uh, Rochester Van Jones. Are you employed? Yes, sir. Who do you work for? Jack Benny. Oh, what are your duties? You mean you want to go on? <laughs> Why, yes. What are your duties with Mr. Benny? Well, besides being his rumble partner, I'm his personal secretary, legal advisor, attorney at law, and I also select the scripts for the movies he makes. You pick his movies? He has to blame somebody. <laughs> well, I don't agree with you. I think that Mr. Benny is a great entertainer, whether it's stage, screen, or radio. And as far as I'm concerned, his last picture was one of the funniest I've ever seen. You keep talking like that, and you'll be in line for a pencil sharpener. <laughs> Jack, I think Rochester's over there picking out a gift for you. Yeah, I guess so. I don't want to see, him see me, so let's move on. Oh, Jack! Jack! Hey, it's Don! Hello, Don. Why, hello, Mary. Oh, say, Jack, I just bought you a present, but I felt it was silly to wait until Christmas, so I'm going to give it to you now. Here. For me? A mop? But, Don, <laughs> what can I do with a mop? This isn't a mop. I just put a handle on it so you wouldn't be embarrassed carrying it home. <laughs> Oh, I see. I thought the widow's peak was so you could get into the corners. <laughs> Don, Don, what have you got in that little bag? Oh, Mary, I'm glad you asked me. Here, here, I'll show it to you. The cutest thing you ever saw. What is it, Don? Well, see, it's a little toy merry-go-round. Well, what do you want that for? Well, now, here, let me show you. First, you wind it up. And then you release the lever, and it spins around and plays music. Really? Let's see how it works, Don. Okay. L-S-M-F-T Lucky strike is as good as can be L-S-M-F-T Smoke a lucky and you will soon see There is nothing quite like popping on a lucky star There is nothing so you better keep on popping Everybody knows they're round and firm and fully Yes, they're fully, fully, yes, they're fully, fully Everybody knows they're free and easy on the door There's a free and easy, there's a free and easy Don't you think it's time you're starting out with the carton If you'll take the time to try one We're sure you'll buy some <laughs> Don, Don, what's the matter? Well, here, here, I, I better wind it up again It's a shame it broke. Oh, that's all right. I'll get another one. Well, I've got to run along now. See you kids later. Bye, Don. So long, Don. Now, Mary, I don't want to be here all day. I'm going to get that other present for my sister. Let's go over to the perfume counter. Well, Jack, I've got some other shopping to do, so I'll meet you there later. All right, Mary. Don't be too long. Yeah, what kind of perfume I ought to get? Oh, there you are. What? Where is she? <laughs> 
Oh, for heaven's sake. Why do you keep asking me about your wife? I told you I don't know what she looks like. Well, here. I'll show you a picture of her. See? This? <laughs> this is your wife? Yep. <laughs> Seems silly of me to keep looking for her, don't it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, miss, she must be in the store someplace, so just keep looking and you'll probably find her. I hope not. <laughs> Come on, Rube. Rube? Come on Oh. <laughs> I'd like to get out of here so I can stop running into such silly... Oh, here's a perfume counter. Must be something nice here for my sister. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Are you the salesman here? Yeah. You're the salesman here in the perfume department? Don't take my word for it. Smell me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what kind of perfume would you like to buy? Well, what kind have you got? I've got taboo, temptation, shocking, white shoulders, surrender, and you should excuse the expression, my sin. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think, I think my sister likes taboo, but I don't know whether to get it for her or not. <laughs> taboo or not taboo, that is the question. <laughs> hmm. I made that up myself. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Everybody says I'm another Milton Boyle. <laughs> well, your your face. Your... <laughs> Your face does look a little like a kinescope. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's see some other perfumes, please. Okay. We have some very nice imported ones. Evening in Paris. Uh-huh. Midnight in Madrid. Uh-huh. Here's a domestic one. Morning in the smog. <laughs> oh, are they, are they bottling it now? Why not? We got enough of it. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, there you are, Dad. Yeah, I thought I'd stop here and get some perfume for Florence. Clerk, what's that? Oh, this is a very fashionable odor. It's called Eau Jouy. I'll spray a little on you. Say, that does smell nice. Yeah. And it's got penicillin in it to fight off virus X. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, you know. You Say, could... Jack, here's a perfume your sister Florence might like. L'eau de la vie crayon. L'eau de la vie Creole. What does that mean? Aroma of freshly sharpened pencil. <laughs> oh, you're no help. Imagine putting a clerk like you behind a perfume counter. Oh, this ain't my regular job. I just sell perfume during the Christmas rush. I thought so. What is your regular job? I'm a goose girl at Hollywood Park. <laughs> Come on, Mary. I've had enough of this guy. Hey, what's that? Well, we've been here all day, and it's closing time. You mean they're closing the store now? Yes. Jack, look out! You're afraid of... Get out of here! Everybody else! Get out of here! Get out of here! Oh, darn it. There goes my other sleeve. Come on, Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, care food packages have been improved and increased with more meats and fats that mean health to hungry children and families overseas. Twenty-two and one-half pounds of life-giving food for $10. Delivery guaranteed. Send your contribution to Nonprofit Care, Los Angeles or New York. That's C-A-R-E, Care, Los Angeles or New York. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... 
When Lucky Strike goes to the tobacco markets, they have you in mind. Your deep down enjoyment of smoking. And that's a big reason why they pay more for fine tobacco. Yes, friends, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky Strike pays millions of dollars, more than official parity prices, for fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. You see, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. You'll know this is true with every Lucky you like. For here's smoking at its finest. Smooth, mellow, deeply enjoyable. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky. And like you, the veteran tobacco men choose Lucky Strike for their own personal enjoyment. In fact, a recent survey reveals that more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So take a tip from the experts and smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. And here's a Christmas gift suggestion that every friend will welcome. A specially wrapped Christmas carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes. Ten packs, 200 cigarettes. 200 wonderfully smooth, deeply enjoyable Luckies. Yes, give Lucky Strike Christmas cartons to your friends and keep a good supply of Luckies on hand to add to your enjoyment of the Christmas season. Gee, Mary, this Christmas rush is awful, isn't it? Yes. Gee, look how crowded this bus is. Hey, Ruth! Ruth! Huh? How are you? Oh, it's you. I'm fine, fine. Did you ever find your wife? Who do you think is driving the bus? <laughs> oh, well, tell Chloe to let me off at the next corner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday, two hours before my own show on the same network, the Actors' Company will present The Man Who Came to Dinner with Charles Boyer, Mel Farrar, Henry Fonda, John Garfield, Gene Kelly, Dorothy McGuire, Gregory Peck, Rosalind Russell, and yours truly, Jack Benny. I'm sure you'll enjoy the show. And another thing, ladies and gentlemen, the next time we meet, it will be Christmas Day. So on behalf of my sponsor, my cast, my entire staff, I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a happy and joyous holiday season. <laughs> Short ahead, Dennis Day, and a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. That's right, this is CBS for Columbia Broadcasting System. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that's toasted to taste better. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted cigarette. This is Don Wilson. The song you just heard has an important message for everyone who smokes. The sure way to get better taste from your cigarette is to make sure you get Lucky Strike. It's toasted to taste better. Of course, the better taste of a Lucky begins with fine tobacco. And then, that fine tobacco is toasted. It's toasted, the famous Lucky Strike process, tones up this naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, a Lucky tastes better because it's the cigarette of fine tobacco and it's toasted to taste better. So, be happy. Go lucky. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the middle of the Christmas shopping season, and as usual, Jack is going to his favorite department store to purchase gifts for his gang. But before we go Christmas shopping, I'd like to take you to a modest little home in the suburbs of Los Angeles. The home belongs to a department store salesman and his wife. It's five o'clock in the morning. Same nightmare. I always have it this time of year, Beatrice. Uh, about that blue-eyed old man that comes to the store for his Christmas shopping? <laughs> yeah. Only this dream was worse. I looked at his hands, and instead of fingers, he had shoelaces. <laughs> on one hand, the fingernails were plastic tips, and on the other hand was metal tips. Why do I always have to dream about him? Now, Mel, control yourself. Maybe he won't come into the store this year. Oh, he'll come, he'll come. He's been coming in and driving me nuts for over 15 years. Well, don't worry about it. Maybe he's mellowed. Maybe he'll be kinder now that he's getting old. He was old 15 years ago. <laughs> Look, Mel. Look, you go to the store, and during my lunch hour, I'll come down to your department, and if you've had any trouble, I'll relieve you. Anyway, there's very little chance of seeing him now that you're in the art department. Yeah, I guess that's right, Beatrice. He, he don't look like the kind of guy who would go in for painting. He, he ain't the artistic type. <laughs> Mr. Benny, you've still got quite a few more names on your Christmas list. Yeah, I still have to get something for my producer and Miss Livingston now, so you can do your personal shopping. Thank you. And, and will it be all right if I charge my things to your account? Charge it? What happened to the Christmas bonus I gave you? I lost it. Lost your bonus? Gambling? Oh, no. I had a hole in my pocket and it rolled down a sewer. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Rod. Stop making up jokes. I gave you a $25 check for a Christmas bonus. I know, Mr. Benny, but I can't cash that check until after next Monday. Why not? Me and the check are appearing on You Ask For It. <laughs> oh, yes. We'll show them. I'll meet you here later, Rochester. Okay. See, I still haven't gotten anything from Mary. I know what I'll do. I'll buy her a negligee. Now, where's the negligee department? Oh, that must be the floor walker over there, that man in striped trousers and the cutaway coat. Oh, mister! Mister! Yeah! <laughs> Are you the floor walker? No, I'm a pallbearer, but my handle broke. <laughs> come here for a corny conversation. All I want to know is where I can buy a negligee. On the third floor, but I don't think they have anything in your size. <laughs> now, don't be so smart. It's not for me. Oh, for your wife? No, I'm not married. You don't tell me you got to look that way all by yourself. <laughs> now, cut that out. Anyway, I don't need you. I'll find it. And the store is so crowded, I don't think I'll ever finish my... Hey, it looks like my orchestra arranger, Malin Mary. Hi, Malin. Oh, hello, Jack. Doing your Christmas shopping, eh? Yes, um, I'm getting some gifts for the boys in the band. Gee, it's a nuisance, isn't it, trying to get... Oh, yeah, bud. Long time no see. Huh? Oh, oh, hello, hello. So long, bud. See you around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Jack. Jack, who is that fellow? Oh, he's a racetrack tout. He's always trying to talk me out of everything. I got to finish my shopping. So long, Malin. Oh, uh, just a minute, Jack. Yes? I'm having a big party on New Year's Eve. I know, I'm... I know. You've already invited me. Yes, and I thought that since you've given so many parties, you could help me out a bit. 
You see, I've already hired a caterer, and I thought you might recommend a good bartender. Well, now, that's the silliest thing, Mel, spending good money on a bartender. Why don't you get one of the boys in your band? I mean, get Frank Remley. <laughs> Nobody knows more about drinks than he does. <laughs> no, I wouldn't try that again, Jack. He was the bartender at the last party I gave. Well, what happened? Well, the first guest to arrive walked up and ordered a scotch and soda. Uh-huh. Remley bent down, got the scotch, never came up again. <laughs> No kidding. Well, thanks for inviting me anyway. I'll see you New Year's. Man. Good. I'll be there. And Jack, if you run into Don Wilson, see if you can persuade him to come to the party too. Persuade Don Wilson? Yes. He never wants to go anywhere since he's taking up painting as a hobby. Painting as a hobby? Say, I'm glad you mentioned that, Malin. I was worried what to get Don for Don. You know, last year I got him a box of dates with nuts in them and everything. Now I'll get him some paints. I'm going to the art department. I'll see you later. <laughs> hey, sure have everything for the, the artist here. Where's the salesman? Oh, there he is. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Uh, yes, sir. What can I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's you again. Huh? How do you find me every year? You got radar or something? <laughs> what are you talking about? Gee, he doesn't recognize me. Maybe everything's going to be okay. What are you mumbling about, Clerk? Oh, oh nothing, nothing. Uh, uh, what can I do for you, sir? Well, a friend of mine has taken up painting as a hobby, and I'd like to get him a nice set of paints. Oh, oh very good, sir. Now, now here's a set that's very popular and reasonable, too. It's only nine ninety-five. Well, gee, those tubes of paint seem very small. Well, that's right, sir, but they're the best paints, and in addition to the primary colors, it also contains such exotic colors as vermilion, chartreuse, turquoise, cerise, heliotrope, citron, pipe fuchsia, cardinal red, bright orange, midnight blue, and shocking pink. Yeah, it has a lot. See, that's a beautiful color right there. That's the most beautiful color I've ever seen. What do you call it? Money green. <laughs> Well, I'll take it. Now, I'd like it gift wrapped. Hey, yes, sir. I'll be back in a second with it. Gee, he didn't even recognize me. And he didn't give me the, the least bit of trouble. In fact, he was real sweet. Oh, boy, I'm lucky. Oh, I'll say I'm lucky. This is my lucky day. There. There, that looks pretty. Well, here you are, sir. That'll be ten and a quarter, including tax. Ten and a quarter? Yeah, it seems like a lot to pay for just a few paints. Huh? Well, not when you consider what you're getting. Most people don't mind paying the extra money for oil paints. Uh, they last so much longer than the watercolors. Oh. <laughs> you have watercolors, too? <laughs> Me and my big stupid mouth. <laughs> I had to tell him, yeah. I couldn't let well enough alone. I had to tell him. Clerk, how much is the watercolor set? Three ninety-five, but you're, they're not near as nice as these are. I don't care. I want to see the watercolor set. Okay. Okay, I'll have to climb this ladder to get it. It's on the top shelf. I had to tell him. Had to tell him. Wish I could paint red spots on my face so he'd think I had smallpox and he'd go away. <laughs> I wish I had smallpox. I <laughs> uh, wouldn't do any good. This, this guy's lived so long, he must be immune to everything. <laughs> but it's my own fault. Here's the watercolor set, mister. Look at it, look at it. Say, that, this looks okay. But it's only got five colors, gray, blue, black, red, and 30 brown. <laughs> I don't care. It's three ninety-five, and I'll take it. Now gift wrap it, and I'll be back. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> now, now let's see. What else do I have to get? Gee, I still haven't gone to the lingerie department for Mary's gift. Yes. What can I do for you, young man? I'd like to buy a Christmas gift for my mother. Well, a negligee is always a very suitable gift. Now here's a lovely one that I'm sure would please your mother. No, she wouldn't like that one. She never wears anything with a low neckline. Oh, is she modest? No, she's tattooed. (laughs) 
Well, here's something that might suit your mother more. Gee, that looks nice. Only I'd like it in a brighter color. You see, my father is always depressed, and bright colors cheer him up. Oh. Well, we have a large selection of colors. Uh, but tell me, what size does your mother wear? Well, gee, I don't know, but she's about as tall as you are. Oh, does she have my build? If she did, my father wouldn't need cheering up. <laughs> How does this one seem? Oh, uh, that looks about the right size. I think she'll like it very much. Will you wrap it up and charge it, please? Yes, sir. Now, who shall I charge this to? To me. My name is Dennis Day. Dennis Day? Uh-huh. The singer? Yes, ma'am. Oh, gee, Mr. Day. I'm one of your most ardent fans. I buy all your records and everything. Why, when I hear you sing, I just quiver and shake all over. Three coins in the fall. <laughs> There they lie in the fountain. Which one Mr. will Day, the fountain... Mr. Day, Mr. Huh? Day! I'm not joking. No, I'm really a great admirer of yours. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Say, I heard you singing. I, I was way in the other side of the store, but I thought it was a record. Maybe that's because I've got a hole in my head. <laughs> hmm. Well, i got to run along, Mr. Benny. I still have lots of shopping to do. Same here. So long, kid. Oh, miss. Miss. Yes, sir? I'd like to get a gift for a girlfriend. Well, just a moment, sir. That man at the end of the counter was here first. Well, that's quite all right. Jingle bells. Oh, there you are, Mr. Benny. Yeah, Roger. Did you finish your shopping? Uh-huh. I even got a present for you. Oh, that's nice. What is it? Oh, now, wait till Christmas. Oh, come on. Tell me, Roger. You know I hate waiting. Is it something I can wear? Uh-huh. Is it something I'd wear above the waist? Uh-huh. A shirt? Nope. Hmm. Is it something I wear above the shoulders? Uh-huh. I've got it. It's a hat. No, but it's right under it. <laughs> well, that's a strange gift to give me. Why should you get me that? Well, I ruined one of your good ones. I threw it in the Bendix and all the curls came out of it. <laughs> Well, don't throw it away. Save it in case I ever get the part of an Indian in a picture. <laughs> okay. Are you done with your shopping, Mr. Benny? Not quite, but you know, I always have trouble getting something for Don Wilson, and this time I think I got him a gift he'll like. A set of paints. Oh, he should like that, boss. Whenever he sees me, he talks to me about painting. He's really crazy about that hobby. I know, and I got him a lovely set of watercolors. Watercolors? Oh, he's way beyond that. For the past few months, he's been painting with nothing but oils. <laughs> Oil? Are you sure? I'm positive. So Don only uses oil paints. Excuse me, Rochester. I'll see you later. There's no sun up in the sky, stormy weather. Oh, clerk, clerk. Oh, it's you again. Here's your watercolors, all gift wrapped and everything. Well, I've uh, changed my mind. I want the oils. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this can't be happening to me. Uh, I lead a good life. I, I'm kind to my mother. <laughs> It can't be happening. You just can't. Look, look, control yourself. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, uh, I'm getting calmer. Uh, I'll control myself. <laughs> good, good. Only, mister, do, do me a favor and tell me something, will you? Certainly. What business are you in? I'm a comedian. <laughs> well, what's funny about this? <laughs> Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not trying to be funny. I just made a simple request. I want the watercolors changed to oils. Now, please gift wrap them, and I'll be back to pick them up later. Well, let's see. I've got to get Mary's gift, and then... Oh, darn it, I'm out of cigarettes. I wonder where I can get some. Oh, there's a cigarette machine at the end of the aisle. There it is. See what a 
fancy cigarette machine. Let's see. I ought to have some change. Hey, Bun. And... <laughs> bun. Huh? Come here a minute. Who, me? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? I'm getting a package of cigarettes. What kind? Lucky Strikes. Oh, Lucky Strike, eh? Smart boy. You're putting your dough on the favorite. I know, I know. And it's a great bet across the board. Win, place, and show? No, cleaner, fresher, smoother. <laughs> oh. Uh, and another thing. What? Come here a minute. Huh? Look at the breeding. The breeding? It's by sold American out of Goldsboro, North Carolina. <laughs> Well, thanks, thanks very much. You going to get a pack of luckies? Am I going to get a pack of luckies? Yeah. Come here a minute. <laughs> huh? I'm going to get two packs. <laughs> two? I'm trying for the daily double. Smart boy. So long and Merry Christmas. Same to you. Same to you. <laughs> if you want better taste in your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to see. Yeah, I got the cigarettes. Now I've got to go. Hello, Mr. Benny. Why, Mr. Kitson! Oh dear, Mr. Kitzel. Hey, I, how, how you come along with your Christmas shopping? Practically finished. Did you buy some nice presents? Wonderful, especially for my magnificent mother-in-law. Oh, your mother-in-law? Yeah, this year I'm giving to my mother-in-law such a gift. I'm proud I thought of it. A trip to Hawaii. <laughs> Why, Mr. Kissel, what a wonderful thing to give a mother-in-law. A round trip to Hawaii. Who said anything about a round trip? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I... Well, I better run along. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Okay, well, Merry Christmas, Mr. Kitzel. Happy you tie to you. <laughs> Here you are, sir. And I assure you, it's a lovely gift. Well, thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and do come back again. I don't even know if I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're one of the most attractive salesmen. Uh, miss, can you please? Oh, hello, Don. Well, hi, Jack. Hey, hey, I'll bet I know something you don't know. What's that? I ran into Bagby, the piano player, and now I know what the boys in the band are going to give you for Christmas. What, what, what? Beautiful set of golf clubs. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I can use a new set. I can hardly wait till Christmas. Well, you may even get them before Christmas if the paint dries. Paint? What paint? Where they scratched off the owner's name. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should have left the name on. I'd know who not to play with. What characters they are. By the way, Don, how's your wife? Oh, she's fine now. Now? Yeah, just a few weeks ago, she broke out in hives, and her eyes were always watering, and... The doctors didn't know what it was until they found out she had an allergy. Gosh, what was she allergic to? The oil in oil paints. <laughs> no. Yeah, so now I'm going to have to go back to watercolors. <laughs> you use only watercolors now, Don? That's right. Excuse me, Don. I've got to go somewhere. <laughs> Don, 
Now, Melville, control yourself. I can't. I can't control myself, Beatrice. I'm, I, I'm going to quit. Now, I, I, now, uh, Mel, it can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. Look, in the first place, how he finds me, I'll never know. But first he buys oil paints. Then he changes them to watercolors. Then back to oils. Then watercolors. Then oils. He keeps coming back like a boomerang. <laughs> me. I'm going to the office right now and quit. Now, now, I, now look, look, uh, Mel, I'll tell you what to do. You go and take a nice long lunch hour and lie down, and I'll take your place at the counter. Well, okay. Okay, when he comes, that's his package of oil paints right there. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> Poor Mel gets upset so easily. I can't let him quit now. It'll ruin all our plans. We worked in the store together so long. We met in the store. He even proposed to me in the store. And now we're married. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse oh, me, miss. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Well, uh, where's the clerk who's usually here? But he's gone to lunch, but perhaps I can help you. Well, I'm supposed to have a package of oil paints ready for me. Yes, sir. Uh... Wait a minute. This must be the man who's been driving Mel crazy. Yet it can't be. This guy couldn't bother anybody. He's such a kindly-looking old schnook. <laughs> Sir, a package of gift wrapped oil paints. Ten twenty five, sir. Look, miss, I, I changed my mind. I'd like to get a box of watercolors instead. But, sir, you. Shh. All right, I'll gift wrap the watercolors. <laughs> the customer's always right. I'll get some watercolors and wrap them, and I'll be right back. See, while she's gone, I'd better write out a card for Don. Let's see, I want it to be something clever. Oh, I've got it. To Don Wilson. Here's lots of colors for portraits to paint. But don't paint yourself, because that much there ain't. <laughs> <laughs> say, that's cute. And people say I need writers. <laughs> yeah, sign of Jack Benny. Oh, miss, miss. Ah, here are your watercolors. <laughs> Isn't that a pretty package? Yes, it is. Now, will you please unwrap it and put this card inside? <laughs> Unwrap it. Card <laughs> inside. Mister, I went to a lot of trouble unwrapping the other one and gift wrapping this one. Have a little consideration, will you? Don't be so mean and so selfish. Well, how did... You're just as bad as that idiot clerk who went to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> idiot! Listen, you jerk, you're talking about my Melville. I don't care who I'm talking about. Now unwrap that package and put the card inside. Oh, no, not me. I know all about you. Melville warned me. Look, miss. First you wanted oil paints, then watercolors, then oil paints, then dates with nuts, and then plain dates. Dates? Then plastic chips, then metal chips, then plastic chips, then metal dates, then water chips. Then Look, dates miss. with oil, then plastic water, then shoelaces with nuts. Look, miss. To you. You drove my husband crazy, but you're not going to do it to me. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, I'll just send Don a card this year. <laughs> Just before Jack comes back again, here's a word for anyone who enjoys a good cigarette. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted, toasted cigarette. They take fine tobacco, it's light tobacco, it's mild tobacco too, and it's toasted, yes it's toasted. Cause the toasting brings the flavor right through So to get a better taste from your cigarette Lucky Strike is the brand to get It's toasted to give you the best taste Yet it's the toasted, toasted cigarette All you have to do is look at a pack of Lucky's friends And you'll see the reasons for Lucky's better taste printed right on it L-S-M-F-T Lucky Strike means fine tobacco Light, naturally mild, good tasting tobacco and it's toasted. 
It's Toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that tones up Lucky's fine tobacco, bringing it to its peak of flavor, making it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So be happy, go lucky, and say, a wonderful way to say Merry Christmas to your friends is to give them Luckies in the beautiful Christmas cartons. These special Lucky cartons are handsomely decorated in keeping with the gay spirit of the Yuletide season. They're so nice to give, so wonderful to get. This Christmas, give Lucky Strike in Christmas gift cartons. Well, boss, have you got everything? Yes, I have. Say, that's sure a pretty package. It looks so Christmassy with all that red paper. That's not red paper, that's blood. <laughs> blood? I never thought she'd punch me in the nose. <laughs> Good night, folks. Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, true tobacco taste, real filtration, famous Tariton quality. They're all yours when you smoke Filter Tip Tariton. Filter Tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich taste of Tariton's quality tobacco and real filtration, too. Because Filter Tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal, renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify Filter Tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.